Good morning, guys. I hope you had an awesome weekend. I am just prepping my Gressa Serum Foundation to put on my face today. This product is really growing on me. I'm not like obsessed with it, but I definitely like it way more than when I first got it. You know, I'm not exactly sure what changed. Like I, I'm not using any more or less of the product, I don't think. I don't know if it was a matter of my skin getting used to it. It's been drying, less like patchy on my face and I'm not getting those weird dry patches as much. It's not 100% not there. That looks about good. Oh man, okay. I feel like I have a lot to tell you about this weekend, but it's really not that much at all. So starting with Saturday, Brandon and I went apartment hunting. We met with a realtor that is Korean American. Thank God he speaks English. We looked at three apartments. The location, it is a bit further from all the places we hang out and stuff, but like the area itself is pretty, pretty cool. So out of the three apartments, I didn't care less about one of them. I hated one of them. And then the one we saw, the second one we saw. Oh, so Brandon and I, like our hearts are really leaning towards that place right now. So let me begin with some of the perks about this place. Well, for one, um, rent is much <laughs> cheaper than what we're paying right now so that's a plus that apartment has a dishwasher which is like kind of insane for korea because dishwashers are not really a thing and it's funny because even as the the realtor was showing us this apartment and i like freaked out over the dishwasher he was saying how koreans don't really use dishwashers and even the the Korean realist. So there were two realtors, the guy that like went around with us and spoke English and then the realtor that is responsible for the certain buildings we're looking at. So we actually met with two different, three different realtors, um, a different one for each apartment. So the one guy that spoke English went with us for all three and the lady that was at the apartment that we really liked, she was saying that because Koreans don't use dishwashers so she was telling us that basically they use um the dishwashers as storage <laughs> the other requirement that i had for our future apartment is that it needs to have an oven like an actual oven like the one we have now and a lot of the smaller places in korea they don't offer it so i think once the realtor was saying once you start looking at places that have two or more bedrooms that is an option um, and the newer apartments, sorry, the older ones, they don't have ovens at all. Um, one thing that I didn't want though, and this is very common in Korea as well, if you're looking into certain places, is that the washer is located right under the stove in the kitchen. I don't really like that because I feel like it makes the clothes smell and I just like to do my laundry in a separate room away from the kitchen. And the ones that are usually underneath the stoves, they're really tiny. In the guest bedroom of the apartment that we want, there, the AC is built into the ceiling, which I really like. Right now, our ACs are on the wall, but they're built into the ceiling. And right underneath, there's like this contraption that comes down with a remote control. And basically, it comes down and it's like a laundry rack for you to like hang your clothes. So that's, I really like that. And that apartment also had a dryer, which is not really a thing in Korea either. But it's not like your typical dryer, you know, the ones that at least the ones that I've seen in the States, like the dryers that look like the washers. It's interesting because um, if you open this door, there's a laundry machine and then above it, it looks kind of like a cabinet. But then when you open it, there are racks inside for you to like hang your clothes. And then I guess you just turn on the heat and it dries your, clo it dries your clothes in there. So it doesn't like tumble. I've never seen that before. So yeah, this one apartment has been like ticking so many boxes for me. Uh, what else? Another thing is in the basement of that apartment building, we have a huge supermarket. And apparently you could even like grocery shop and then take the cart all the way up to the floor of your apartment like put your groceries back and then return the carts which is insane like i don't even have to leave my building and then on the first floor there are tons of restaurants and like cafes um there were hair salons like you name it 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 had it and then across the street is this huge department store 
that one I don't really care too much about because I don't shop at department stores in Korea anyway. At this point right now, we need to start praying about whether we're meant to move there or not because my heart's already so invested in this apartment. I really, really want it. And I don't want to just selfishly make that happen if you know we're not supposed to be there. I, I really trust that if we need to, it'll happen. Things will line up. So yeah, that was Saturday and then Brandon and I went to a wedding Saturday evening. So one of the things that like really made me sad on Sunday is the fact that I learned that the 1 million dance studio YouTube channel got terminated because of copyright issues. And you know, I, I was always curious about that. Like I did, it did cross my mind many times. Like how do they get away with, you know, um, with these videos, with all these different artists. Cause for me, even when I upload my dance with uh, fear videos and I use like maybe 10 seconds or like 15 seconds of a song, I get emails from YouTube and what they basically tell me is like don't worry you don't have to take your video down but um uh, there are like copyright issues with it so I think as long as I don't try to like monetize and make money off of the dance with video dance with fear videos which I don't yeah they said my accounts in good standing and then freaking Sunday I find out like someone left me a comment saying that they're not able to watch two of the episodes of my dance with fear and then I tried it myself didn't work on my phone I had Brandon log into his account try it didn't work on his phone we found out that it's still available on the computer but it's not accessible on the mobile I don't freaking know I was kind of pissed because I thought YouTube took the video down without even telling me they have taken one video down of mine in the past, like a long time ago. I think it was my eyebrow tattoo video because they said the description wasn't accurate to what I was sharing. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so anyway, um, that was kind of a bummer. So when I go to dance tomorrow, I'm planning to get some answers and talk to the manager there and see what happened with their channel, if they're going to find an alternative way to post videos. They had over 2 million subscribers on that channel and if you guys look up the bring back 1 million hashtag on Instagram, there are some angry people. I've seen some angry posts toward YouTube saying like calling them all sorts of names for like ruining their day and a lot of people were saying that, you know, these videos are what really inspired them and made them happy and like how could you take that away and seriously there were some pretty awful name calling if i do get some updates it'll probably be not here but it'll be in my dance with fear video i'm trying to upload the next episode this thursday honestly it's not that exciting because there isn't any footage of me dancing i don't know i, I don't feel like there's much to share but I feel like people appreciate updates. So another thing I did this weekend is getting my summer clothes ready because it's getting super hot here. So I had to wash and put away, you know, a lot of my cardigans and like sweatshirts. And I feel like I just got my summer cap, um, my spring capsule ready. And it's not so much, you know, washing and putting things away, even though that is kind of a pain too. But thinking about filming another capsule wardrobe video is kind of overwhelming just because my spring one took me forever to edit. So I have to make sure I really plan ahead and I give myself enough time to do that. And it's not just my wardrobe that, you know, I have to figure out. I gotta set up Brandon's as well. This Friday, I am attending a dinner that I was invited to by Wish Trend, the Korean beauty company. They are going to showcase some new products and introduce them to us. Very cool. I'm actually kind of nervous and kind of excited about it. And I'm nervous because it feels like 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 a first day of school kind of thing. Like I'm going to go, I'm not going to know anyone except for the one girl that works there, Marianne. But other than that, I think there are going to be a lot of other YouTubers there but I don't really watch anyone in Korea so I don't, I don't, I'm not familiar with anyone I was thinking, oh man, am I going to be like by myself with no friends? I hope there's alcohol at this thing Isn't it funny like how I talk on the camera and I connect with you guys all over the world but here I am like 
still nervous to meet people so that's this friday and then thursday friday saturday sunday it's a huge weekend for brandon because it is spartan race in korea and if you guys oh didn't know um brandon is i don't know if this is his official title but it used to be like he was the race coordinator so he'd ha like help map out the course and just oversee stuff and make sure things are okay yeah so he's gone for probably three to four days this weekend this spartan race is going to be the biggest one in korea so far i think he said there are about 8,500 racers so that's really cool great for brandon great for reebok and i will probably pop in either saturday or sunday to support him I'm not gonna run it. I've done two Spartan races in the past and the second one kind of traumatized me because it took place on at a ski resort in the summer. So just imagine running or walking up the really steep ski slopes and just I was pretty miserable and it was really hot. People ask me all the time if I'm gonna run it like every year okay people don't ask me all the time but every year someone or some group of people ask and i'm always like oh no i'm okay so he's gonna be gone so party at my house oh so i had a question for you guys so right now my current schedule mondays are morning chats Wednesdays are my dating my husband vlogs and Thursdays is a wild card It's usually like a capsule video or a dance or like kind of it's just whatever I feel that week You know while I'm doing my shopping ban I want to create a space for when I upload my gratitude You know my favorites video I don't want to choose Thursday because that means that on Thursdays that's all I'm going to be uploading and Thursday I kind of like leaving as a wild card so I'm trying to figure out a day where I can set for my gratitude series until the end of August right until my first shopping ban ends because I will be uploading this gratitude video every single week if they're going to be short hopefully i'm only going to be sharing one maybe two items per week that have added value in my life so it's not going to be you know like a monthly favorites where there is a whole ton of stuff my question is should i upload the gratitude videos on tuesdays or fridays i feel like fridays are not the best time to upload because Obviously, I feel like weekends are, you know, people usually do stuff and they're busy. And because the gratitude video is something that I really want to interact with you guys on and for you guys to take part in, I would not want to upload it at a time where there's low engagement. So I would really appreciate it if you guys can let me know below. I also have another question for you guys that I forgot about until now. How many of you guys are on Snapchat? And I'm really curious about that because I feel like Snapchat, like the younger people <laughs> are really into it. And younger, I mean like I feel like teens and like maybe early 20s. This is just my general feeling. Um, and I know based on like my YouTube analytics, my demographic majority of you guys are around my age, like late 20s to mid 30s. And I feel like I'm trying to be more active on Snapchat just to like connect on a different platform. But... I don't really know how many of you guys that watch this, these, this series are on Snapchat. And yeah, sometimes I share stuff on Snapchat, but I don't know if you guys are on there. So I don't know if I'm being redundant on both platforms. And I think in the future, Brandon and I maybe want to do like a Snapchat Q&A where we might ask you guys for video submissions, asking us a question or something. Um, but obviously, I don't want to do that if there are only like two of you that use snapchat very curious please satisfy my curiosity in the comments below it's about that time to get my day started so i will talk to you down below as always thank you guys so much for all the comments you leave it is seriously the thing that i look forward to reading like first thing in the morning i know how much it takes to you know actually sit there and like write a comment because there are plenty of videos that i watch and i don't leave comments on so i genuinely want to thank you for taking the time to do that and for connecting with me and sitting through these long videos 
Have a great day and I'll see you guys many times this week. <laughs> Bye!